Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to show you how I made these bases. These are 25mm round and pill shaped bases, but you could do the same things I'm going to do in this video on any shape or size base that you like, or even a diorama or a display stand. This is pretty simple to do, though I am using one tool that you may not have. This textured rolling pin from Green Stuff World. I think this one is just called Bricks, but I could be wrong, I'm not sure. I don't really get much opportunity to use these rollers, but I do quite like them. I'm also going to use some green stuff, though you could use any kind of putty that you like, and obviously some bases. These are the Warlord bases that have a slight lip on them. Let's get straight into it. I mix up some green stuff and simply press it onto the base. The rim on these bases is quite helpful here. It makes it very easy to keep the putty inside the confines of the base. It took me a few goes to figure out the right amount of green stuff to use per base, but I got there eventually. It was a bit less than I initially expected. I spread the green stuff around and try to get it as level as I can. There's nothing too tricky about this. To make it even more level and remove the fingerprints and such, I roll the green stuff out with an old pill bottle. Green Stuff World do offer a smooth, non-textured roller, but why not just use something simple like this and save the money to buy more textured rollers instead? Or something else. You do you. The end result isn't perfectly level, and I don't think it has to be. Just as long as it's relatively even and flattish, you should get a reasonable result. Using the roller to apply the texture is very easy. I make sure the surface is at least a little bit wet so that it won't stick to the roller. Then I roll the roller across the green stuff. This should be done with confidence. Once you've started, you've committed, so keep going. If you hesitate, you'll end up with a weird deformed texture. You should also avoid turning the roller for the same reason. Once the texture has been rolled on, I use a wet finger to sort of smooth things out a bit. The roller does seem to impart a bit of a striped pattern across the tops of the bricks, but that's easy enough to smooth out. It also smooths out the corners of the stone shapes and makes them seem a bit more worn and weathered. That's the sort of thing I want. Eventually, I'd got enough of these bases done. Some of them have kind of dips and dents in them, but I think that adds character. It makes each base a little bit more unique. While the rims did prevent a lot of overspill, some of the bases do have a little bit of an overhang on the edges. Before cleaning this up, I let the green stuff set completely. That way I'm not going to deform the stone shapes when removing that excess. I use a knife and some scraping to tidy this up. It doesn't have to be perfect. As long as all of the big lumps are gone, I'm satisfied. At this point, the bases are complete enough for my purposes, though you could always add extra interesting stuff like bits of brick and wood to represent chunks of fallen buildings or piles of rubble or whatever. I just wanted these bases to be very quick, simple and not distracting. Good enough for basic infantry figures and such. If I decide to later, there's nothing to stop me from adding extra details anyway. So for now, these are ready to paint. I blue tacked all the bases to some cardboard to make handling them a bit easier, and then I primed them with black Steinal Res Primer. But you could of course use any primer you like. I'm not the primer police, you do whatever you want. When the primer has cured, I take some Vallejo Model Air White and pick out a few of the stones. I'm trying to be a little bit random with these and I don't want to paint too many of them. Sometimes less is more. The idea behind this is to create slightly lighter stones when I spray the base coat. While I do try to be neat, these don't have to be perfect. You might notice that I've got a couple of spots of white on stones that I don't intend to be white. That's fine. None of these stones are going to be perfectly solid colours, so it adds to the effect. Once that's done, I airbrush on some Vallejo model colour black grey. I thin this just a little bit more than it really needed to be to go through the airbrush. I don't want to go too heavily with this because I want the white stones to be visible underneath this coat, though I do want them to be fairly dark. I want the effect to be kind of subtle. I applied the black grey in a few layers just to be sure that I didn't obliterate the white bits, and I think it was fairly effective. Here you can see the before and after. The difference is quite obvious. You can see the stones I painted white are still reasonably obvious, but they don't stand out like a sore thumb against the black anymore. Then, to add a bit more colour variation, I lightly sprayed the bases with a roughly 50-50 mix of the black grey and Vallejo model colour London grey. Though I did actually do this a little bit heavier than I had intended, but that's okay. There is still that subtle colour variation that I wanted. 
To add a bit more interest, I'm going to pick out some more random stones in different colours. First, I use the model colour black grey again. This is basically the same as when I applied the white earlier, except obviously I'm adding a darker colour. I pick out a couple of stones, trying to be as neat as I can about it, though little mistakes and spots on other stones aren't the worst thing in the world. The difference is a little bit subtle, but that's not a bad thing. Then I do some stones with Vallejo Flat Earth. This is going to stand out quite a bit against the greys, but washes and dry brushing later will tone that down quite a bit. Still, because of how different this is, I will be applying it sparingly. Like I said before, less is often more. The paint I've used here is an older Flames of War bottle, but I believe it's pretty much the same as the regular Vallejo bottle with the same name. Continuing with a colour that doesn't quite seem immediately obvious for stones, I apply model colour Russian uniform World War II. This is a sort of greeny tan colour or a khaki of sorts, but it should work quite well for stone, though like the previous colour it will stand out quite a bit, so I try not to go over the top with it. It may look a bit weird at this stage, but I feel like the end result is going to be more interesting than just using various shades of grey. Once I'm satisfied with those highlighted stones, I apply a fairly heavy dry brushing of model colour London Grey. I wasn't quite sure if this would look all that good. I thought maybe it would be a bit too light, but I went with it anyway. You can see almost right away that the dry brushing makes the colours pop quite a bit. I think it's quite a dramatic improvement. If I'm honest, I'm actually kind of surprised how well this worked, though I do think now the entire bases are just a touch too light. That's okay though, I take care of it by applying a wash of Army Painter Dark Tone. This was thinned roughly one quarter water and three quarters dark tone. I use a fairly big brush and just slop it on, more or less. I want this to mostly sit in the gaps between the stones, but I do aim to coat everything with this wash. It'll darken everything down and also add a slightly dirty look to everything. This is obviously very simple to do, but I think it's quite effective. It's toned everything down to pretty much exactly where I want it, though it has deadened the highlights a bit, so I add another lighter dry brushing of London Grey. I don't want to go anywhere nearly as heavy as before. The goal here is just to bring the highlights around the edges of the stones up just a little bit. I think it adds that little extra something to make the colours pop, and it's definitely an improvement when you see it next to the ones that I hadn't applied the dry brushing to. I pondered whether or not these bases needed anything more, but I figure, for now, they're done. So, to complete the job, I apply a coat of AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish. Now, they're pretty much ready to have the models attached to them. Stay tuned for that in the next couple of days. If you've been watching my streams lately, you've probably seen the models I intend to put on these bases. If not, then I guess it's going to be kind of a surprise, though there won't be any prizes for anyone who actually guesses them. So, I'm pretty happy with these bases, especially considering how quickly and easily I was able to get them done. They aren't going to win any awards or anything, but they're not intended to. They are exactly what I want though. Bases that look good, are quick and easy to build, and easily replicated. Sure, it might take a little bit more time if you don't have the texture roller like I do, but even the painting technique I've used here might be helpful for quickly painting pre-made bases, or you could always sculpt your own. The painting, while not anything fancy, is definitely a step above just grey and some dry brushing. That tiny bit of extra effort is really worth it in my opinion, and if you want to put in just a tiny bit more effort, you could easily add some bricks and bits of rubble or fall on poles or whatever, either before painting or after. Maybe you want a bit of debris to hide a prone figure behind or to designate it as a commander or something. As these are, they are just simple bases, but they do make a good starting point for more intricate bases that you might want to use on those more special models. For now, I'm very happy with them how they are. I will be attaching models to them soon. I actually wanted to finish the painting video for those models before this basing video, but as you can probably hear in my voice, I'm still a bit sick and wanted to get something out for Monday, and this was just quicker and easier, especially on the throat, to get done in time. So there will be an extra midweek modelling video, so stay tuned for that. Hopefully what I've shown here is helpful for you. As always, I'll put a list of the colours I've used in the description, though I do encourage you to use whichever colours you personally think will look best. If you've got any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the comment section below. And if you haven't already, why not sub here on YouTube, follow me on social media, or watch me stream on Twitch. And if you really like what I do, please consider helping to support the channel over on Patreon, or perhaps by purchasing a shirt or mug from my merch store. 
Links to all of those things are in the description below. And as always, I shall return soon. So until then, be excellent to each other and thanks for watching. Farewell.